welcome to Sew Pretty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. Today's video, I've got a very lovely discount code for you. So if you watch my previous video, and I'll link the link up here, I talked to you about this beautiful fabric that I was gifted from Pin and Sew. The lovely Aga contacted me and said, would I like to choose something to sew with just to see how her fabrics work and then I could talk about it to you. And um, you guys that have been watching me for a while will know that I don't endorse things unless I really love them. And I can tell you, I really love this fabric. It's the most gorgeous jersey with this big dog tooth design on it. And um, it comes in two colourways. Uh, this blue colour and then I think she had sort of a grey and black colourway but um, I will of course link all the links to um, Pin and Sew's uh, web address and things in the drop down box below so you can hop along and have a look. So this is um, I think described as a jacquard jersey, I've never worked with a jacquard jersey before and I think that means that the pattern is woven into the fabric. Um, but do correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not entirely sure. The only other kind of jacquard that I've ever been useful is quite a sort of stiff coating type fabric. So if you know why this jersey is called jacquard, let me know in the comments down below. It's really, really soft and snugly and warm. And um, in my previous video, I was talking to you about how I was going to sew this up into a simplicity pattern. And you can tell that didn't happen. Uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, the most being that that pattern was a pain in the backside. Um, yeah, so if you didn't watch my previous vlog, hop along and have a look. But this is the pattern. It's a simplicity pattern, um, 8424. And I picked this up because I really liked this view here. So this is like a wrap over cardigan style top, um, sort of like a ballerina style cardigan. And I just thought that would look really lovely um, over a BB pencil skirt, and I will show you that in a minute. Um, so I decided sensibly for me, because I don't always do this, but because this fabric is so beautiful, I didn't want to wreck it. I made a toile, and I used some navy blue spotty, um, inexpensive sort of sweater knit jersey that I had in my stash. And it went hideously wrong, guys. Honestly, someone put in the comments in the last vlog that the neckline stretched out. And it did. I mean, you have to put elastic in this neckline, which it didn't work out well for me. It was a hideous mess. The neckline literally was like bagged out all over the place. So basically, how you... Um, construct this cardigan, you stitch elastic to the wrong side of the fabric, right the way round the um, neckline, and then turn it under and stitch it again. So, I mean, I don't, I don't quite know what I did wrong. Maybe the elastic was rubbish. Maybe I didn't pull it quite tight enough as I was going. I did try to, but that, the two lines of stitching, plus the fact that Jersey is not the easiest fabric to work with at the best of times, so I was using a walking foot. My sewing machine is not keen on zigzag stitch, um, which is another issue, although it's much better when I'm using super sharp needles. Um, I'll link uh, the name of those in the comment box below because I can't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, it was a mess. And I'm so glad I made a twirl because I would have ruined this gorgeous fabric and then had to, to you know, message Aga and say, oh my gosh, I've ruined it. So anyway, that didn't happen. I will show you how I managed to rescue, if I can get it out from under this pile, this hideous mess of a top. So what I decided to do was I took that awful elastic off and I added a neckband. So I cut myself, I drafted a neckband, which is literally just a really, really long rectangle of jersey that I've then folded in half and then stretched as I've sewn it on with my overlocker. So you're doing sort of right sides to right sides so that the neckband then folds out and you've got your overlocker stitch on the inside. And um, I managed to rescue it from that point of view so the neckline was better. 
Um, the ties, I didn't like the ties in this pattern. I don't like the way that the pattern is finished, to be honest with you. The ties are kind of attached to the front panels. So you've got two sort of triangular front panels. The ties are stitched to that. There's no facing, there's no lining. It's just sort of like sewn on. So you've got a raw edge and then you leave a, a hole in the one side and then wrap it round. But the ties are both the same length and usually when I make anything that's wrap, the longer tie is the one that has to go through the whole, no, that's the shorter one. Oh, I can't remember. One of them has to be long in order to get them to go all the way around you and then tie in a neat bow at the front so both of your ties are the same length by the time they've gone round you. But they're both the same length in this pattern. So yeah, I decided to do away with the ties. And what I did in the end, I'll turn it inside out so you can see, is I stitched both of the side seams with the overlap together so that there was no ties. So it's like a mock wrap. Um, and I'll show you how I did that here. So you can see from the inside, what I've done is I've just tucked into that seam, both sides, the overlap. So... Um, it's like a, a mock wrap but it it doesn't sit nicely because um, it's slightly tighter now having chopped the elastic off the neckline I did manage to do quite a good rescue um, and I'm quite proud of myself I didn't throw it in the bin because I was close I can tell you but yeah so that's what happened to that <laughs> Don't like that pattern much, to be honest. I might make the leggings one day, but I don't think I'll be trying to make that cardigan again. So, moving on to Pin and Sew. They are offering you today a discount code for 15% off any of their fabrics on the website. If you put the code Kitty15, I had to have a just check there, so I don't want to get it wrong. So. Capital letters Kitty 15 and I'll pop that down here so you can see and that is valid for one week from today So you've got till the 29th of November uh, 2019 to use that code um, on all their gorgeous jersey fabrics and there's so much to choose from But I'm really pleased with this. So today's the topic of today's video is my workwear wardrobe and I um, chose to make this to go with several other items that I've been making over the past sort of six months or so. And I thought you might like a whistle stop tour through my sort of capsule wardrobe for work. Um, what I've done is I've chosen uh, complementary colours and um, each of these pieces, more or less, can be worn sort of interchangeably with each other. And um, my favourite colours really are navy blue, um, Grey, although I've got nothing grey here to show you, but I have made one of the dresses in grey as well. So a mustard yellow colour and an emerald green colour. And obviously black is one of those colours that goes with everything. Um, and I picked up some awesome new shoes this week, which I feel like I need to show you, even though it's not sewing related. So hang on a second and I'll reach down and get them. So these shoes came from New Look in the 915 section, which is the 9 to 15 year old section. So they are teenagers shoes and I'm 41, but hey. Um, they were £23 because there's no tax on kids shoes. And I used to have a pair just like this when I was 18. So when I saw these, I was just like, I'm going to have to buy those. They are awesome. So I wear these with my workwear. And also I've just got a, oh, excuse me, bending down plain pair of navy suede sort of what do you call that heel uh can't remember it's not a kitten heel it's slightly bigger than a kitten heel but not as big as a stiletto because i can't walk in stilettos in fact i have trouble walking in heels at the best of times so i'm going to kick off i'm going to talk about their clothes and then add in some twirls so you can see how they all work together so my first outfit that I am going to show you in a twirl is this top, which is my new make from Pin and Sew, and this skirt. So you can see here, this is just a little skirt that I've made. And the pattern for that is, and I'm going to have to refer to this list because I'll never remember them all, 
Newlick K6843. So if I just pop the twirl in now, you can see that um, this combo together looks really lovely. I think it like kind of looks sort of modern, but sort of classy too. And because the skirt is quite a bit shorter than I normally wear, um, I've chosen to make this lovely... The name has gone out of my head. Oh my goodness. Seamwork Astoria. Gosh, that was hard. My grey matter is struggling today. Um, yes, it's a, a Seamwork Astoria top. Um, I'll try and pop a picture in of that pattern so you can see. But yeah, that's outfit number one. So the next combination is my Seamwork Astoria with a Tilly and the Buttons BB skirt. And I've talked about these before on my channel. These are really simple skirts to make. They come from her book Stretch, which I've made nearly every item of clothing out of except for the jogging bottoms. And I've got plans to make those. So it's just basically made entirely on an overlocker. You've got uh, one, two, three, four pattern pieces for the actual skirt and then a waistband and it couldn't be more easy so that is outfit number two and for outfit number three I've just added in my kinder cardigan from Wendy Ward's book The Beginner's Guide to Sewing with Knitted Fabrics I think it's called but again all the info's down below so outfit number four is the spotty mishmash creation made using Simplicity 8424, quite a lot of swear words, uh, teamed with my navy Tilly in the Buttons BB skirt. And um, I have to say the um, top is probably a bit too uh, boobalicious for me. I'm not one for getting out the old décolletage in public. So... Um, I think if I am going to wear that top to work, I would definitely wear like a little cami with a lace um, neck line underneath, if you know what I mean. So definitely, if you're going to get your legs out, you've got to put your boobs away and vice versa. So that's outfit number four. Outfit number five, despite what I just said about getting boobs and legs out at the same time, is the mustard skirt with the navy top, just so you can see what that looks like. Outfit number six is a Tilly in the Buttons uh, BB dress this time. And I've only made one of these dresses, but I do like to wear it quite often. I never really wear it without a cardigan or something over the top, as you'll see in my little twirl. It goes really nicely, and I'm quite liking the whole um, column of colour uh, look that's going about. So I usually wear it with a green ready-to-wear cardigan from next. And the... Um, Tilly and the Buttons BB dress is, it's just got a bib attached to the top of the skirt and some straps that cross over on the back and I've just popped a couple of black buttons on there and it's quite a smart look but again I would not probably wear that without a cardigan over the top. So outfit seven is that same ready to wear cardigan from next with my spotty BB skirt. So I have made, and this was part of my Minerva Blogger makes. Um, it's made out of scuba and this is another BB, but what I've done with this one is I've lengthened it quite a lot. So it's more of a midi length. Um, and uh, it's because it's scuba, it's super sort of, I don't know what you'd describe it as. It's like wearing support knickers, do you know what I mean? The fabric is so tough that it sucks you all in and makes you feel like you are nicely contained. So I really do like wearing this skirt with my emerald green cardigan. So number eight, this is a, I did a vlog about this some time ago and I'll try and put a card in. Um, it was actually a couple of years ago, I think, and this is probably my most worn item of clothing in my wardrobe for work wear and actually other times as well because it's such a versatile piece. And this is a must, um, mustard, it's a blue stripey um, dress made of Pontaroma. I think I purchased this Pontaroma from Stitchy Bee a long time ago. It's beautiful quality. I've worn it hundreds of times. It's washed really, really well. 
it's got three quarter length sleeves um, I stripe matched it all it was one of my first ever stripe matching attempts and it's such a comfy dress to wear and that goes really really well with my mustard kinder cardigan so this is another piece I've spoken about in the past and the kinder cardigan is like a long line cardi um, you can have pockets on it if you want but this one doesn't have pockets it's got quite sort of big sleeves and this almost it's not really a shawl collar but it's a nice wide neck band and I always feel smart when I'm wearing that with a tan coloured belt and um, yeah so that's a favourite of mine and outfit number is it have we got to number nine is this number nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, number nine is a black BB skirt. Again, nothing exciting about that except for the fact that you can wear it with tons of different clothes and um, it's really comfy for work. And I wear that often with my toaster sweater. So this is not the version with the really big roll neck. I have made that version before. I think this is version two and um, it's got like a really clever... Um, fold down neckline which is almost like a funnel neck and um, sleeves with cuffs on the bottom and a bottom band and this lovely fabric was from Fabricland um, which I have just heard in my local town is closing down in January and I am gutted because um, there's only two shops really in Salisbury where you can buy nice fabric and Fabricland is one of them, Franklin's is the other and I've got some exciting news about Franklin's to share with you, but not just yet. Um, but yeah, I'm just absolutely gutted for them because they've been there 32 years and it's my sort of go-to place to get uh, less expensive fabrics for making twirls and stuff like that. And also some really nice bits and pieces of fabric that, you know, you have to rummage a bit to find the really nice pieces, but they... Uh, usually really good value for money so I'm going to miss fabric land in Salisbury and then the last outfit to show you is another Seamwork Astoria and this is the first one I made I talked about this recently made from this sort of uh, fern print uh, jersey and um, I wasn't initially sure if I liked the Astoria pattern but now I've made two and actually seeing how they work really really well with sort of higher waisted clothing particularly pencil skirts but I know lots of people who are into sort of 50 style love to wear them with big full skirts circle skirts so yeah the Astoria is I think going to be one of my sort of staple patterns to go to because it's really comfortable and it hits you just at the right point I did add an inch to the pattern but I'm not really sure that I needed to do that. Um, I could probably have done with just making it straight from the packet. And I think I made a size... No, not size six. I can't really remember. I'll pop it all the details down below. So um, that's my work wardrobe. I hope you've enjoyed looking at some of my makes. I put a um, poll up on my community page to say what did you want to see next? And most people wanted to see more makes. And um, aside from all of this, I have been busily making other things. Christmas is coming. There's lots of stuff to get excited about. And I usually make my kids at least one handmade thing each uh, for Christmas. So I'm starting to think about what to make them. Probably toys, if I'm honest. Stuffed toys. You can't ever go wrong with stuffed toys with kids. They love it. Um, yeah, and that is today's video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please do the thumbs up, press the subscribe button. I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. So if you do like the video today, don't forget to do that uh, subscribing thing because that means you'll never miss another one. Okay, see you later. Bye.